Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Earlier this week I was making a card using the first Frost stamp set and I was telling you how I bought this with the holiday catalogue and so it's clear mount but it carried over into the main catalogue this year and now it will be cling mount. But when I bought this I thought oh it's just for autumn and here's a Christmas sentiment and I only really used it at Christmas. But when I was tidying my craft room early this week and then making cards with a friend yesterday, no, Tuesday, uh, I found that I liked to use this little die cutting set, which made the really pretty little set here look. And while I was looking at it, it made me think of some of the DSP that we had. And it was the, the new DSP, the Perennial Essence paper. And it had these same kind of roses on. Let me find these. So it had sort of a similar kind of a rose. And I thought I would make this really easy little card using it. And I promised you that I was going to make another card using the same set and it still wouldn't be autumnal and it wouldn't be Christmas. So I want to show you what I'm making today with it. A little while ago I remember seeing a card that Mary Fish had made and Mary makes the most fantastic cards. I'm always in awe of everything I see and it was this one. She'd made this with um, the Myths and Magic set a long while back and the, this little frame piece really stuck in my mind. So during the week, I was trying to find this card and I, I found it on Pinterest and I just printed off the picture. And if you look at Mary's um, like blog posts and things, she has dimensions and everything that you can use as well. So I'm going to case this card, but I'm going to make it with totally different things. But Mary, thank you very much for sharing your card with everybody. So I looked at the paper and I looked at the stamp set and I chose another paper that I think is very similar to the stamp set. Let me just get out. Let me just find it. It's this piece. And I mean, the flowers are not very similar. But if you look at the back, I thought that this piece here really was reminiscent of this pattern. So I'm going to use this pattern. And uh, in, in that way, it sort of all ties back to this stamp set. And when I was making this card, and if you remember, this was the one that I stuck down incorrectly and quickly had to cut another piece of card and stick it on the back. But when I was making this, I hadn't decided if I was using Flirty Flamingo Flowers or if I was using Blackberry Bliss or Rich Razzleberry, which in actual fact I went with Rich Razzleberry because I liked the colour better. But I'd already cut out lots of the same large and small flowers in the Flirty Flamingo. And I thought, well, I'm not making any more flowers. I'm not going to choose a different colour. I'm going to use what I already have. So today's card is cased from Mary with her mermaid card using my leftovers from earlier this week. So let me show you how we make it. You need to start with a piece of thick Whisper White card. And when you're using Whisper White for a base, it's best to use the thick one because the thin card is actually thinner than our coloured cardstock and it's not really the best for using as a card base. It isn't heavy enough and it soon sort of splays out if you have a card standing up. I like it best for stamping on. So I always use the Whisper White Thick and this is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter and then folded to make basic card, our basic base. And then I've cut in the thin. Now, if you, if you look, I mean, this is thick, but this, you can hear the difference. 
So I've cut the thin piece at four by five and a quarter and we're going to attach it just to the top of the card like this. Now I'm going to turn my card over because I've got a little nick there and I don't want that on the front. So I'm just going to... In fact, I could probably get it out with my bone folder or... Uh, make a, a, I'll use a stamping block. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to attach this and I want it to be slightly raised. So I'm going to put it on dimensionals. And I'm going to use the these. Now these are the pieces that come in paper pumpkin kits, but we do sell the longer pieces of this. And uh, I like I like this. I think it's really easy to attach, and it tears easily. So when you're using it, it's sort of it's it's good for um, shaker cards and things as well. But I think it's just an easy one to use. You don't have to be bothering about cutting lots of pieces or um, putting lots of individual dimensionals on. And I'm just going to do two little pieces for the end there. Let's just tear this in half and use it. And I think when you use a base card in the same colour as your you know your main card it's nice if you just can stand this up a little bit give it a little bit more height and dimension because it uh, it really shows up on the card you only have to be careful if you're going to be posting it though I know I post a lot of my cards to the UK and sometimes if I've used too much in the way of dimensions it doesn't fit through the little slot that's the ordinary mailing slot. So I have to pay extra postage. Or if I've put a lot of um, dimensions on with, you know, um, like embellishments and things, then it doesn't go through. So I, have, I do have to be a bit careful, but I know that this is not going to go through the post. It's going to be a card that I give by hand. So I'm okay. Okay. Now, to make, let me get Mary's picture back. To make this little piece, you use the layering squares set. So I've got the layering squares dies here. And I've already done the cutting and everything. So I can show you which ones to make. And what I did first was I took a piece of scrap white and I stamped my sentiment on there. And I'm using the wishing you all the best. So I stamped just on plain white, and then I took the largest of the squares, let me get the piece I've done, and like I did on the card on Wednesday, I just measured it up. I stamped first and then put my die on to find out whereabouts I wanted the writing. I wasn't sure if I was going to have my writing at the bottom and my picture at the top, or whether I wanted it off to a side, but I decided in the end I wanted it sort of near the top, but not too near the top because you've got a little frame to go over here. So I wanted it sort of in the middle and nearer to the top part of the card. So that's the largest square. And that's the one that we're going to use as our backing, if you like. Then with the largest of the scallops, I cut a piece of old olive and it was a scrap piece that I had. I just cut that out and I saved the rest because I cut some leaves from it. But here's our scalloped piece. So I'm just going to attach them as we go along. Oops. I'm just making sure that I only see a little bit of the scalloped part all the way around okay and then the next piece is the black frame and what I did was I got a small piece of black let me show you you don't actually need very much and you needed the second largest square so I counted from here so this is one two so I needed this one so that was one two 
three, four, five. So it's the second and the fifth largest squares. Oh, it's just starting to rain here and it's lightning. So if you see or hear funny noises and funny lights, it's the weather outside. So I just put my largest one down and then you put the smaller one down. So you have the same distance all the way around. And when you run it through the big shot and it comes out, it will make a perfect little frame for you. And pop these back. So that was the second and the fifth. Okay. Now this is going to go, going to go onto here. And we're going to put dimensions on it again. You can use this or you can use um, the small dimensions on it. Or if you're using the bigger ones, you might have to cut them in half. But I am just going to, oops, I'm going to use the little ones on the back just to show you. I put one at each corner, one in the middle, and the same, oops, just the same all the way around. I find if you don't put a piece in the middle, the the little frame tends to bow down a bit. Take the backings off here. I don't know if you can hear the rain now. It's really, really coming down. Probably going to have hailstones. We've had hailstones all week. And it's typical Alberta weather. When you get to mid-June and early July, it seems to rain most afternoons. Not, not at all afternoon, not, you know, just for a short time, but uh, it seems to rain and rain and rain and the hailstones come and then it clears up and the sky is blue and uh, you never know it's rained. Okay, so I'm just going to, oops, just going to try and make this so it's the same all the way around. I just have to move it slightly so I can see. It's a little bit high, that, I think. I'll just stand it like this while I can, so I can see. There we go. So that's your little frame, all attached. Okay. Now, we don't need the squares anymore, so I'm just going to put those to one side. What we do need are some of the flowers that I'd cut out before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach them like this. Uh, I just want, I want them to overhang a little bit. And I just want to have two of the larger flowers and one of the smaller ones. And I want just a tiny bit of green behind it. And I've chosen the old olive, same as the scallop piece. And I'm just going to pop that down there and have that overhanging as well. So I probably, I'm going to attach this main flower first. I'll just get my glue, excuse me. But I'm only going to attach the little bit that will go on the frame. I'm not attaching it to the white. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on. Then I'm gonna put it on the frame like this. Just hold it for a second. There we go. And then this one, I want to have slightly behind and up a little bit. So again, I'm going to put it on this part of the frame, but I'm actually going to put the glue onto the frame this time so that I don't sort of miss where it's going to be and I end up with sticky bits. Okay. And I want to put this leaf behind as well. So, because that's not quite dry, I think I might just attach that leaf. I'll put a bit more glue on and I'll attach the leaf now. I'm going to take that little piece off the bottom because it makes it too long. Okay, I'll just put a little bit of glue on top there. There. That's how I wanted it. And then this little piece here, you could attach with a dimensional as well, but because I've already got quite a lot of dimension to the card, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on instead. 
I'm not quite sure which way that flower is going to be or which way it should be. I'm going to pop it that way. Pop that down for a minute and we'll leave that just to dry. I think it's drying quite well. Yeah, nothing's moving. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the base card and we're going to make the banner that goes down here. Um, let me get the paper. I've already cut some paper, but I haven't trimmed it to the right size. It's just an inch and a half across and we need it to be five inches long. And I'm going to choose the bit that has some of the old olive color on and some of this where it's the, I don't know what kind of a leaf that's meant to be, but uh, some bit where it's got that. I actually like this piece as well because I like that bright little bit there so I don't know which one I want I'm going to cut both and then I'll see in a moment so I just need it to be five inches long and there's one piece here's my other and then I'm just going to do the end with the triple banner punch going on here and then our little banner piece will be going behind and I'm going to have it at the left hand side because I've already got those flowers at the right and I'm going to see just which piece I like best and sometimes you don't know until you get all your pieces assembled which one's going to work better for you Yeah, I liked the colour on those ones, but uh, most of it got cut off with a little, with a little banner edge. So now I quite like this piece because it has the lighter little colour here. Okay, so I'm going to go that way. I'm going to put some fast views on here. I think you don't always need lots and lots of DSP. I know my last card I made and it was all DSP across the front and that was the main focus. But sometimes you just want it sort of as an accent. Okay, so I'm going to attach that there and I'm going to attach it with fast views or with wet glue. But I think I'll go with wet glue actually because then if it's not quite straight, it doesn't matter. I can move it along a little bit. it to be slightly over the banner. There. I'm just going to press down on the two pieces of card, not where I've got the little framelit, just over the, the white piece of card so it sticks. Okay. And then I had thought that if I was using the rich raspberry colours, I would use the embellishments, the frosted flowers, to put on but because I've chosen the flirty flamingo these don't really match I don't know what the white would look like but I let me see if I can just find the poker tool let's see I don't know if you'll see them hmm, actually that's not too bad we, we can either have those or we can have the gold pearls have, have the little metallic pearls and the little metallic pearls you can see easier. Let me just go back to look at these. Oops. They are quite hard to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the little gold metallic pearls. I'm going to pop one in here. If you have sequins, you could use sequins. 
I like uh, I like little pearls. I'm not so good at uh, sequins because I always end up with them all over the floor. Three on a card and fifty on the carpet is uh, what I usually do. <laughs> Okay, so there we are. That's my little case of Mary's Mermaid card using the first frost and some of our perennial essence DSP. I hope you like that one. I hope you've enjoyed watching the first frost cards this week. If you would like to see more of my videos, don't forget to press the subscribe button on YouTube and then the little bell and you'll be notified every time I leave uh, video. I usually leave two a week, one on a Wednesday and one on a Sunday. If you would like to subscribe, I would really like that too. Uh, at the moment, I think I have something like 620 followers and I'm trying desperately to get to a thousand so that we can have a giveaway uh, as a thank you for following me. So if you feel like you could subscribe, I would love it. Thanks ever so much for watching everybody and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye.